Namaste to everybody. Welcome everyone to this uh, live show and this live dialogue with uh, the one and only Avijit Ayer Mitra. We are going to discuss a little bit of background of what is happening on the India-China border. And uh, then Abhijit knows everything about what happened on the LAC. Hi, Abhijit. Good evening, sir. And Har Har Mahadev to all our viewers. Wonderful to have you here again. So from Mughals to the Chinese, you seem to be an expert of almost everybody, every race. <laughs> Not the race, maybe just the history and increasingly satellite imagery. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we saw your satellite imagery. In fact, I mentioned in my Twitter yesterday that uh, <clears throat> you and General Hasna are one of the few uh, seem to be getting things right. Not just uh, the background and the strategic part of it, uh, but also the fact part of it. So uh, to start with, I will... Uh, Refer all my viewers, you can uh, all go and uh, look at that article I wrote a few days ago, which has been approved by Abhijit, uh, by the way. And, uh, and yeah, we lost that. Uh, can you repeat it, please? And tweet it. <laughs> OK. So um, what is happening, Abhijit, is that uh, we have on our borders. Uh, for whatever reason, there is a history to it. We have a neighbor who is a Confucian imperialist, who is a, a new mercantilist, and who is also, when it suits him, communist. So with this deadly combination, how is it that uh, we have been so trusting that we've been thinking that these people are going to honor those uh, five or six agreements that we have entered with them since 1988 and we think that they will not uh, go back on it after all every, every mercantilist is like the east india company and we know the history of the treaties that the east india company entered into with the indian kings and what happened to them finally how we how we have been so trusting So the problem with India is it's not just that we're trusting. Um, I think it has more to do with fear of China. And we mask our fear as good, very in a sense. You know, there's a fundamental characteristic differences between the Chinese strategic culture and the Indian strategic culture. When we lose, we try to over-philosophize things and we pass off our weakness as goodwill. And in this last part, we're quite similar to the Chinese. The Chinese also pass off their weakness as goodwill, but when they're in a position of strength, unlike India, when we tend to philosophize, uh, the Chinese actually go in for the kill. Now, what has happened in Galwan on the night of the 15th of June was substantially different. Okay, so can From you what just... what has uh... last 50, 70 years. And there is a reason. And there is a reason for this. You see, what had been happening so far is that uh, the Chinese had started building infrastructure left, right, and center, accompanying their economic boom. Uh, it, a lot of it also had to do with giving businesses to their own companies. So they were building fabulous infrastructure on their side of the uh, border, as well as their side of the LAC, which is technically Indian territory. They were creating what you call facts on the ground because, you know, infrastructure is control. Uh, if you notice everybody who's saying, oh, no, 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 we controlled this area, we controlled this area. The only thing they're willing to refer to is patrols. Patrols are not control. This is a very, very important fact you need to understand. The moment people start talking about we patrol, we patrol, you know, fundamentally, they're trying to hide the fact that there is Chinese infrastructure in the area and infrastructure equals control. Number one. Number two, what happened ever since Modi took over is particularly curious. Modi had an initial setback. He's learned his lessons. And in that, it actually mirrors what happened to Pakistan. So let's start off when Modi gets sworn in. And was, was it May 2014? Was it May or was it March? Uh, yeah, let's May, just May, assume May 2014. Yeah, yeah uh, it was May. 
May 2014. May. So what happened in May 2014 was that he made all these peace overtures to Pakistan and to China. Uh, he went and attended, if you remember, Nawaz Sharif's uh, daughter's wedding, or was it son's wedding or something like that? Some, some event that. in Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, he got bitten very badly uh, by events that happened after that. And after that, he just ignored Nawaz Sharif, he ignored Pakistan. And when the Pulwama attack happened, he went and hit hard inside not Pakistani Kashmir, but inside Pakistan proper into Khyber Pakhtunka province. Right. right, right. So he course corrected. Uh, unlike many of his domestic policies, where he simply doesn't course correct even when things go wrong, on foreign policy, he's quite good. He course corrects. Now, Parallelly, what was happening with China was that he had invited Xi Jinping over to Ahmedabad. You remember they were jula yes, swinging yes, yes, like yes. Uh, on the banks of the uh, uh, Sabarmati River and all of that. Right. And at that particular time, there were Chinese troops in Indian territory. Right. This happened two or three times during his uh, 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 tenure. And the highest flashpoint that happened was Doklam. Now, in Doklam, we scored a huge tactical victory. You know, I was in Tibet at that time. I got up to about 80 kilometers of Doklam, uh, very close to the Everest base camp and things like that on the Chinese side. There was no build up there. And in Beijing, they were scratching their heads and asking me, what the hell are you people doing? This is not the normal playbook we get from you, at least not for the last 15, 20 years or so. So they were quite surprised about it. And that's when I realized we had caught them on the back foot. Um, so without doubt, what happened in Doklam, us thwarting their uh, road, was a huge tactical victory. But then that got squandered at Wuhan. And it's very important to understand why Wuhan was important in all of this, the so-called Wuhan spirit. Uh, Wuhan, you see, is infamous for a whole load of things other than COVID. Uh, so what, what happened at Wuhan is that basically the Bhutanese, remember, Doklam is not in disputed Indian territory. It is in disputed Bhutanese territory. Right. India went in to try to protect Bhutanese interests, and the Bhutanese got feet of clay. If you notice, there's this wanker called Lam Tsang Tsering or something like that who runs this wanker of a newspaper called the um, uh, Bhutanese. Yeah, I know. And the kind of criticism of India you see out there, remember, this can only be sanctioned by the Bhutanese royalty. Remember that. Nothing in Bhutan happens without the sanction of the king. Okay, if you I, do, I, I, the king. I, I do remember your power with that guy on Twitter. Yeah, it's very important. The re main reason for the power was, of course, more personal ego. But, uh, you know, it now fits a pattern that all, all his negative comments about India started off after Doklam. Because after Wuhan, really. Why? What happens at Wuhan? What is important at Wuhan? The Bhutanese got feet of clay. They weren't willing to stand their ground. And here's the point. India can't stand our ground unless Bhutan is willing to stand its ground and stake its territorial claims. So what happened after Wuhan was the Chinese ended up building the road. It was a huge strategic victory for them. Uh, they ended up building the road and they have fortified certain positions from what we can see in the latest satellite imagery. So it was a tactical victory that ended up in a strategic defeat for India. But... What was very, very important in all of that is that Modi clearly understood what was wrong in, in the Indian policy out there. He had understood it before, but he had stopped it. And I'll tell you the sequence when uh, we discuss the events of what happened. So he decides after May 2019, so his second term, that infrastructure building is going to go haywire. It is going to match everything that the Chinese have done on their side. Of course, not uh, exactly the same, but very, very similar. The building of very, very good roads, the building of hard infrastructure, permanent infrastructure in Ladakh, in Sikkim, in Arunachal and things like that. Less so in Arunachal, but it's going to come up uh, uh, soon. I hope now after this, uh, again, you know, the, the thing about Indian bureaucrats is, sorry, Sanjay, I'm, I'm really, really sorry, but the, at least the ones posted in the center have a huge propensity to disappoint. You can always count on them to disappoint. And I see this as the son of an IAS and an IAS officer, and I'm talking to an IAS officer. And I agree and with really you. Sorry, you know, that familiarity breeds, it's that familiarity breeds contempt syndrome. Um, 
no, but and unfortunately, but, my father uh, was also the deputy director of the Officers Training Academy. So I'll uh, interrupt you here. I, I agree with you. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, smart. Good. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, uh, anyway, where was I? Uh, yeah, so Wuhan. what happens is that he is cautious now. He is building up infrastructure. He is insisting now that because the BRO had failed to, the, the border roads organization was so corrupt, so inefficient, they failed to deliver for so long. A lot of the construction has gone over to private companies. There are lots of German and Austrian and Swiss companies that have a huge amount of uh, experience in building tunnels in the Alps. You know, some of those are the greatest technological marvels we've seen. Uh, they are being brought in to build these mountain tunnels with double roads and things like that. Before, the belief was that if we built infrastructure, we were literally creating a highway through which the Chinese could invade the Indo-Gangetic Plain. What they never understood the infrastructure. Very defeatist, very defeatist. Um, and, you know, it ignores the fact that, that the real war is to be fought in the air. You know, infrastructure equals aim points. Aim points are a military planner's dream come true because every piece of infrastructure is fundamentally destroyed by those places. So if you look at it from an air warfare perspective, the Chinese building infrastructure is an excellent thing. If you look at it from a ground warfare perspective, it is a horrible thing because they're going to invade you with tanks. So this also shows a very important shift of mentality. Uh, I don't know if it has shifted to an air centric approach of war, but it will force a shift to an air centric approach of war, which is very, very important. Now, why is this important? Because the Chinese hold the heights, so you'll always, on the ground, you'll always be fighting an uphill battle. In an air battle, the advantage is with us, because the uh, uh, Himalayas drop off much quicker on the Indian side. It comes to the Indo-Gangetic Plains, which is about 1,000 feet elevation, which makes uh, operation of aircraft extremely easy, as opposed to the Chinese that have to take off from about fifteen to uh, 14 to 15,000 feet which reduces their range dramatically, it reduces their ability to carry weapons dramatically, it just makes air operations a nightmare. You know, when we went from Beijing to uh, uh, Lhasa, the plane that we went in was a wide body, big airliner, an Airbus A330 that's used on long haul flights. And yet, one third of it was kept deliberately empty and we were allowed to move around and sit uh, at the back of the flight during uh, 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 during the flight. But when it came to landing, we were all pushed to the front saying, you have to sit in the front. The back of the plane has to be empty. And that is usually done for extremely difficult landings. Now, remember, the A330 is a very, very capable plane. For a massive airliner like that to have those kind of weight limitations on it tells you a lot. You know, these are the kind of things about intelligence. When you work on military stuff, you pick up even on commercial flights, you can gain so much intelligence, right? So Russian planes are trashy planes. Sorry to say that. So their weight limitations will be far, far worse than what an Airbus A330 can uh, e experience. So what happens here is you are able to, if you use air power, you can concentrate much more force, much more efficiently against the Chinese out there. And you have a field that is just built. It's an air pla war planner's dream come true in the number of things you can bomb because their supply lines are so precarious. I took the train also from Xi'an to Lhasa and then did a reverse turn back doing uh, Lhasa to Beijing from the northern track, which is which is not as precarious. The train that comes in from Xi'an, from Sichuan. So it's from Sichuan to uh, Lhasa, goes through extremely high mountains, very precarious. Whereas the uh, Beijing to Lhasa train, it goes up north via Xinjiang province, which is a much uh, easier gradient to negotiate. In all of these, there were highly precarious bridges. And you bomb those bridges, you can basically cut off Chinese supply lines completely which then makes it very easy picking because you've just localized the amount of uh, stocks and spares and industrial capacity to uh, war supplies to what is already stored in Tibet, not what can come in from the rest of China where their industrial strength is much greater. So these are the fundamental changes that have happened. That said, it is also important to realize one thing that went wrong. 
at finger four in Pangong, which is where the LAC lies as per most interpretations, uh, you will see that uh, there was a base on the Indian side of finger four. And I use the word base loosely. It was just two huts, not even tents. It was two huts. It was literally two jug jugi, what we call jugi jobris that were there <laughs> till May 24. And this, by the time the Chinese had actually built a proper asphalted road right up to the tip of finger four, we had just built two huts. By October 2014, so you're looking at a six month period, Modi had already built up a massive army camp with a double lane asphalted highway leading all the way up to finger four. Very, very important. So he got the infrastructure idea then. Then of course, Joklam Wuhan happened. He probably stopped construction to see see how this uh, uh, rapprochement with China will go. And now he's become once bitten, twice shy. Unlike Nehru, who, you know, Kennedy used to say, uh, keeps getting slap after slap from the Chinese and pretending it never happened. Modi is not like that. Okay. So what has happened is the exact reverse of Modi. Today, uh, you know, Ram Guha has written one more of his vacuous articles praising, uh, saying that Modi is like Nehru. Modi is nothing like Nehru. And if anything, you should learn from this. These people are trying to divert the story. Uh, we need to learn from this. And that is what we're going to do over the next half hour, 45 minutes, is walk you through what has happened. Uh, uh, very good background, uh, Avjit. I want to Hindi Bashi, our viewers, I want to tell you that Abhijit is telling you now, that Modi's approach is वो पहले से बिल्कुल अलग है और मोदी ने खास तौर से 2019 के बाद इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पर बहुत ध्यान दिया है और इसलिए चाइना जो है वो समझ नहीं पा रहा है कि किस तरह से मोदी के साथ डील करें क्योंकि पहले जो हुआ करता था क्योंकि चाइना ने कुछ एग्रीमेंट साइन कर लिए थे और चाइना जब भी धमकाता था तो भारत उस धमकी में आ जाता था और फिर अपनी कमजोरी को गुडविल बता के और उसे Rationalize करने की कोशिश करता था. Uh, am I right? Yeah. Have I translated you fairly accurately? Correct. So uh, uh, I will also request my viewers, please, you can uh, keep asking questions on the chat because there are so many questions, so I can't handle all of them. Just go be question push now. Please super chat Pepuche. Please ask it on super chat. And Abhijit, I think uh, Abhijit will be very happy to reply to your queries and uh, fasten your seat belts because the real real action is going to come now now we are taking off from beijing and uh, trying to land at lhasa so abhijit right let's go right there to the action on the 15th 16th night haan ji iske liye thoda maps uh, upar kar dijiye the first image okay the first image so here is the first image yeah right you uh, can we do zoom in, please? Oh. Bit of zooming in. Anji. Yes. Yeah. This is Pangong area. Yeah. Uh, area. Yeah. 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 तो देख रहे हैं ये लाइन जो है हाँ एक्जेक्टली दैट इज वो जो कर्सर है वो प्लीज वो सिरिजाप पे ले जाइए थोड़ा अगर ज़ूम इन कर पाएंगे सिरिजाप इस दिस आई गेस राइट तो और राइट ले जाइए हाँ सिरिजाप अब ये जो लाइन जा रहा है ये 1962 का सीज़फ़ायर लाइन है ये क्लासिफाइड मैप है अब भी क्लासिफाई हुआ है C जो उनके एम्बेसी ने भेजा था वाशिंगटन को अमेरिकन एम्बेसी दिल्ली ने भेजा था वाशिंगटन को अब सब बोल रहे हैं जो भी गवर्नमेंट का ऑपोजिशन है वो बोल रहा है देखिए सिरिजाप सिरिजाप में फिंगर 6 है कई लोग इसे फिंगर 8 कहते हैं यस नो नो दे क्लेम इट इज फिंगर 8 इट इज नॉट फिंगर 8 फिंगर 8 जो है ये ऑपरेशनल डेफिनेशन है जो कार्टोग्राफिक डेफिनेशन है मैं बस कार्टोग्राफिक डेफिनेशन पे जा रहा हूं कार्टोग्राफिक डेफिनेशन से ये सिरिजाप जो है फिंगर 6 है ठीक है ना ओके सिरिजाप इज 6 वेयर इज 8 देन 8 इज फर्दर ईस्ट 
बिल्कुल एंड में जहाँ खुनार्क फोर्ट लिखा है ना बिल्कुल राइट में या या और या खुनार्क फोर्ट बहुत इंटरनेशनल बॉर्डर के पास उधर है ठीक है अब ये देख लीजिए जहां जो ये जा रहा है सीरीज आपके पास सर इफ यू कैन जस्ट मूव दी थिंग अट दी सो पीपल कैन सी नो नो जस्ट कीप सर्कलिंग सीरीज आप सो पीपल कैन सी ओके ओके यूज द कर्सर टू सर्कल अब आप देख लीजिए ये जो सब बोल रहे हैं ये सीरीज आप क्योंकि बैटल ऑफ सीरीज आप जहां हमारे उनको परमवीर चक्र मिला था बैटल ऑफ सीरीज आप में आ, वो बोल रहे थे कि ये बॉर्डर है आप इस मैप से ही देख लीजिए कि बॉर्डर उधर नहीं है वो सिरिजा पार करके और थोड़ा वेस्ट आ गए थे और जहां बॉर्डर जा रहा है उसमें जहां लाइन ऑफ एक्चुअल कंट्रोल जा रहा है वो सिरिजा के काफी ऐसे है इस मैप में थोड़ा कम दिखाई देता है बट इट इज ऑलमोस्ट अबाउट फोर टू एट किलोमीटर टू द वेस्ट ऑफ सिरिजा इट रन अलोंग फोर Okay. Finger four. This so, is uh, you, what you contend is that finger four is the LAC. It has always been the LAC. Okay, it has always been the LAC. ये लोग क्या कह रहे हैं? नहीं हम छः तक patrol करते थे, हम सिरिजाब तक patrol करते थे. और जो मैं बोले जा रहा हूँ, देखो भाई patrol माने control नहीं होता है. ठीक है? आपके घर में जब मेहमान आता है, उन्होंने yeah. आपके घर के कब्जा नहीं किया है घर कंट्रोल होता है घर जब मेहमान आके आपको पीट के आपका प्रॉपर्टी का डॉक्यूमेंट्स लेके आपको साइन कराता है कि ये मेरे नाम पे कर दो तब वो कंट्रोल होता है ये सब चीजें ये लोग फिडल करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं ये एक डी क्लासिफाइड सीआईए मैप है जो नेट पे भी अवेलेबल है अगर आपको हाई इस पे चाहिए करके ना What is now? This is the layout of the land. So, आप समझ लीजिए कि सिरिजाब पे ये लोग कितना झूठ बोले जा रहे हैं कि सिरिजाब पर ही बॉर्डर है सिरिजाब पे बॉर्डर नहीं था बट नाइनटीन नाइनटी तक चाइना का भी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर नहीं था हिंदुस्तान का भी इधर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर नहीं था जैसे मैं बोल रहा था हमारे साइड पे बस दो हट्स थे उनके साइड पे कुछ भी नहीं था फिर नाइनटीन पे सिरिजाब को पार करके इस बॉर्डर तक जो इधर दिखाई दे रहा है उन्होंने चाइनीज लोगों ने एक रास्ता बनाया पहले और फिर उस पर यह पूरा तार कोल तार सब लगा के डबल लेन अच्छा सा सुंदर सा हाईवे बनाया पक्का 1999 में कच्चा रास्ता बना था 2004 में पक्का रास्ता बना दिया इन लोगों ने ठीक है अब सर ये अगर थोड़ा ऊपर जाके हॉट स्प्रिंग्स में जूम करेंगे हॉट स्प्रिंग्स परफेक्ट अब ये हॉट स्प्रिंग्स एरिया आपको दिखाई दे रहा है ये काफी जो डैश 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 वाला लाइन है वो है 1962 का लाइन और जो उसके पीछे चाइना के साइड में जो डॉट 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 वाला लाइन दिखाई दे रहा है वो चाइना का 1959 का क्लेम लाइन था तो 1962 में उन्होंने एक नया बॉर्डर बनाया जहां सिक्सटी वन में बॉर्डर बनाया और सिक्सटी में अंदर आके उन्होंने बोला कि ये हमारा स्टॉपिंग पॉइंट है तो ये हॉट स्प्रिंग्स है इसका लोकेशन याद रख लीजिए और ये पैंगोंग के कितना दूर है दिस अबाउट 90 किलोमीटर नॉर्थ ऑफ पैंगोंग ये भी थोड़ा याद रख लीजिए और सबसे ऊपर अगर आप जाएंगे सर ये गालवान में ये जहां गालवान दिखाई दे रहा है गालवान रिवर हाँ वहां पे वो गालवान रिवर है yeah. उधर थोड़ा जूम कर लीजिए yeah. हाँ, उधर थोड़ा नीचे ले आकर जूम कर दीजिए सर वो सेंटर में हाँ तो ये आपको गालवान दिखाई दे रहा है ये देखिए कहां से कैसे क्रॉस करता है और फिर जो शोक है शोक जो लेफ्ट में है वो गालवान शोक में खाली हो जाता है गालवान का ट्रिब्यूटरी है ये राइट तो आप देख रहे हैं कि गालवान कैसे शोक में मिले शोक शोक रिवर इज रनिंग नॉर्थ टू साउथ टू साउथ देन देर इज गालवान रिवर इज इज अटर्न हियर जस्ट बिफोर शोक टाउन This turn, V turn, and then it goes like this, and this is the Nubra River flowing into Sho, and then it goes left, exactly. and then it goes into the Pakistan-occupied Gilgit-Baltistan. Exactly. So that is how it is. Uh, I will just uh, interrupt you here. Uh, there is uh, 
a lot of discussion and uh, we refer back to mao setong's uh, uh, pronouncements in the 60s or even in the 50s where his uh, ambition was to link up tibet with gilgit baltistan and it is uh, uh, the analysis of uh, many strategic experts who say that the galwan galwan valley is so crucial because uh, the dsdbo road needs to be cut off in order for them right. to realize in the long yeah. term their ambition of linking up tibet with gilgit baltistan by occupying the entire entire shlok valley here is the important thing you need to see where this dash 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 line is that is cutting through the galwan the dbo road runs parallel to the shok right so remember even the line of actual control does not come anywhere near the shok it is about 5 to 6 kilometers away from the shok right. and at no point at no point do the chinese get a direct view of the shok except right at, except at that little left turn of the galwan valley uh and that is a very brief very very narrow tactically unuseful view which can only happen through the galwan valley wo bhi main aapko dikhaunga ki kaise it doesn't actually work out completely uh okay. agar image 2 mein jaate hain image 2 please okay. okay so this is the galwan valley now what this is the area where this entire episode happened right so you can see the galwan coming in from south to the north and then it turns westwards and it meets the shok about 5 km down that line jahan yellow mein maine one mark kiya hai udhar se 5 km ja ke west mein it meets up with the shok right that is number one that i've marked out correct the red line is how the lac runs in the galwan right 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 uh yeah. the blue the big blue thing that i marked across the galwan that is about five, uh, 650 to 700 meters in on the chinese side right me chinese side hai left uh, uh, right south me chinese side hai north uh, west me indian side hai uh, the blue is where they constructed the dam to block the waters of the galwan why did they construct right? a dam so what uh they they want to block uh, the galwan See what had happened was on the twenty third of May. Uh, sorry, on the eighth of May. By the eighth of May, you see that red line, the LAC, where I marked yeah. one, the yeah. inverted V. Yeah. Chinese had come in and set up two tents out there. On By the twenty third of, uh, on the exactly where I marked one. Okay. So they had crossed over. Okay. This place. Yeah. They had set up a tent out there, but two tents. Mm-hmm. by the 23rd of may what had happened was we kicked them back across the line of control those tents were no longer to be seen out there and what had happened was they had stopped the flow of the river uh, the flow of the river they they will stop only if they want to do some additional constructions downstream uh not just that they were using it as punishment remember they did not control anything downstream it was indian control downstream we kicked them back on the 23rd of may so there was no possibility of construction okay right there was no possibility of construction uh and what this de escalation talks that happened on the 6th of june uh that was all about deconstructing or dismantling the so called dam that they had built the dam is a very mysterious structure which we'll see in the next image because uh it doesn't actually um it doesn't make any sense to me how they're stopping a river in the middle of its flow but anyway let, let me tell you what happened in galwan you see the green line going from point 1 to point 2 that i've marked in green that is the route that the indian army took on the night of the 15th of june to outflank the chinese come down and destroy that dam understand this we went into china to destroy a dam we fully expected to die and we expected to kill the chinese okay this wasn't some unarmed little uh, bhai chara brigade 
this wasn't some uh, uh, hindi chini bhai bhai nonsense we went in there to ensure compliance and failing compliance we went in there to destroy the dam full stop this entire episode has happened by uh, between 5 to 700 meters within chinese side of the lac okay so two is where there was a landslide which is where most of the casualty happened it is possibly also where colonel babu was killed now the chinese did something very stupid they sent up about 200 troops into a very very narrow path it was only about 3 to about 6 feet wide coming from the hills on the right down to the valley okay and what happened was that road isn't built for 200 troops standing on it so it collapsed and went down we suspect that is how colonel babu also died or he was clobbered to death uh, by the chinese somewhere up there this is when shooting started understand indian troops always carry guns out there the magazine is detached but it is kept in their pockets in their uh, fatigues ka pockets almost certainly shooting happened there is no way shooting did not happen in this uh, particular episode then what happened was our boys started coming in direct from 1 to 2 they didn't take the long route uh, as shivarur has described in his article three waves we went in in to beat them up or kill them or do whatever because our bodies had to be brought back our pow's had to be brought back all of this had to be brought back and remember the thing is when you get wounded the wounding happens almost every month the chinese come in and throw stones at us for the last 40 years we go in and throw stones at them ye bat se marna this uh, using uh, bats with nails stuck on them happens almost every month every second month uh, along the border okay so there's nothing new about it there's nothing new about it there's nothing new about it the problem here is deaths happen once deaths happen you never back off because that is the worst message you can send the moment the first death happened there was no backing off there was going to be no de escalation we went in and from all the satellite imagery i've been able to see the number of helicopters coming in the number of trucks evacuating the casualties on their side seemed to be significantly higher we don't know how many injured bodies the trucks carry because the helicopters were four helicopter trips done but the number of trucks ambulance trucks that we saw going out were quite a bit higher we estimate somewhere between 60 to 80 uh, on the chinese side uh, we don't know how many injured how many dead It, the, the total may be 80 injured may be much fewer dead but at least between 60 to 80 injured or dead combined okay that is what has happened out here now next time please yes now this was the image taken on the 16th of june afternoon 130 pm that is to say about 8 or 9 hours after the clash had happened okay you can see the water is in full flow that little thing there is the divert or the block and you can see further down on uh, this is still about 500 meters into the chinese side of the lac there is absolutely no water this was the blockage that we went into destroy okay now i can't show you this because it's uh, uh, classified imagery though i have sent it in private to uh, uh, sanjay ji uh, uh, because you know i mean i haven't paid for those images uh, for publication of those images unfortunately uh, i don't have that kind of money i have only purchased those images for self viewing unfortunately okay let's just uh, what see this image this particular image Yeah. this is uh, uh north up or south up uh this is where i had marked the blue you remember the blue if you go back to the previous image where the blue uh just go back one image you see where yeah. the blue line is the blue blockage right. across the river yeah this is where that, that is so this is where the blue is so if you go to the next image yeah this is okay. where the blue line is okay, okay. this is where the top of the river Okay. Uh, it is five to seven hundred meters, six fifty to seven hundred meters within Chinese territory. Uh, China, not Chinese contend, territory, Indian territory. Uh, if I may interrupt you, what you contend is that uh, this dam was destroyed on the night of the fifteenth and sixteenth. It was not. It was not. What happened was that the operation failed in a sense. It failed operationally, but it succeeded politically. 
And I'll tell you why. This image was taken at 1.30 on the 16th of June. Right. A similar image taken on the 18th of June at 1.30 now shows the river in full flow. Not just a simple flow, it is a torrential flow happening. And we are seeing Chinese trucks come and deposit some kind of rusted metal girders. They're red in color, but they're metal girders, we can clearly tell, used in the construction of whatever this mechanism is. Uh, because, you know, this blocking mechanism, if you look at it, it's very strange. You can see the water has little white flecks on it. That shows a great deal of speed when it's flowing. It's white water rafting. This is that white water surf that you see. And yet, notice there is no reservoir, that construction between where it says no water and water in full flow. You can see those little red things out there. It is not even a dam. It is it blocking off the entire valley. Uh, there is no reservoir. Can you see a fast flowing water stream is just stopping like magic in the middle of nowhere. This image is very, very puzzling. You don't know what the hell this dam construction was. There isn't even a divert to re-divert the water back. So this but is very strange. We don't know what that would create a lake. And that would create a lake and that would actually create problems for them upstream. Right. But here is the issue. You're not seeing a lake. As I were being, right, we, we got a, a weather a satellite to do moisture readings further down on the Indian side of the Galwan Valley, and the moisture readings were almost zero, showing that there was no water flowing. So there has definitely been a divert. We do not understand how this divert happened. Anyway, besides the point, the main thing is, as of the 18th of June, this dam structure had been dismantled. They were bringing the girders over to the Indian side and depositing it on the Indian side to show compliance. Now, this is the so-called structure. It wasn't a tent that we went in to burn. Statement. This was the structure that the Prime Minister referred to in a statement. It was not a tent. You do not start off a huge shooting match for a tent. This was done for water resources. Because understand, you may think, Bhai, ye itna chota sa stream hai. why are you, why did 20 people die just to destroy this one chota sa dam on a useless little stream? It is the question of precedence. Most of our waters are fed through glacial flows on the Tibetan side. Glacier, jab baraf melt hota hai, uthi paani se sab uh, uttar bharat ke nadi uthi se barte hai samar mein. Thik hai na? If we had let the Chinese go away unchallenged with this dam, they would have dammed right. every single river flowing in from China. Your Ganga would have stopped, your Yamuna would have stopped, your Brahmaputra would have stopped. Okay. It is more important, it is less important for the Brahmaputra than it is for the Ganga and the Yamuna because in the Brahmaputra, 98% of the water catchment is on the Indian side. It, most of the water happens on Arunachal because Arunachal may uh, kya hota hai ki mountain aisa hai, clouds hai, uh, stop ho hai, uh, girta hai, so sub catchment hai hota hai. Tibet side mein koi bhi pani nahi hai. But here, that's, that's, that's the relief yeah. rainfall characteristic. The Ganga, the Yamuna, the Indus, all of them, they are all fed through glacial flows. Understand what India has done. We have not just helped the whole of North India doing this. But we have also created a precedent for every country downstream. Burma, Thailand, the entire Ganga to Mekong. It's called the Ganga Mekong area, greater area. Every river originating in Tibet. Southeast Asia depends on these rivers. Don't forget that. We have struck a blow for the whole of ASEAN as well. So never forget that. They did not so come into our territory. So that Some was a strategic move. Huh? That was a strategic move. It was a totally strategic move. Uh, can you see me? Yeah. It was in 1975. Okay. Uh, when the Chinese killed four of our soldiers. I think it was the Assam rifle. So 1975, 45 years, nobody has been killed by the other side of this border. 
Yet when they blocked the water, we said you are not going to get away with this. हम मरने के लिए तैयार हैं तुम्हारे को मारने के लिए भी तैयार हैं घर में घुस के मारेंगे तुम्हारे को ओके नाउ यू नो आई कीप गिविंग गालीज टू मोदी दिस इज वन ऑफ दो टाइम्स व्हेन यू एब्सोल्युटली विल नॉट गिव गालीज टू मोदी अभी बैठ के मोदी का जय जयकार करो बिकॉज ही इज नॉट द एब्सोल्युट राइट थिंग इन 45 इयर्स ही इज द ओनली इंडियन प्राइम मिनिस्टर दैट हैड द गट्स टू स्टैंड अप गो इन देयर ब्लू आर मेन ठीक है वो शहीद हुए हैं देश के लिए देव गॉन एंड डाइट फॉर द राइट ऑफ ऑल दीज वॉटर्स टू कम इन टू इंडिया ओके सो नेवर एवर ऑन दिस इश्यू कीप कर्सिंग मोदी बट नॉट ऑन दिस इश्यू ऑन दिस इश्यू हिज कॉन्डक्ट हैज बीन एग्जाम्पल एंड ही रिफ्यूज टू लाइफ ही रिफ्यूज टू लाइफ बिकॉज आई थिंक ही मेड अ मिस्टेक सिंग हमारे टेरिटरी हमारे टेरिटरी नहीं हमारा साइड ऑफ द एल ए सी के अंदर नहीं आने लिए बट ही वॉज he avoided saying that uh you know they came into our territory why because they did not come into our territory we went on the chinese side of the lac and we bashed the living daylights out of them okay so this is what happened in galwan now sir if you can go to image 4 please okay this is the gogra area and i want to explain to you what happens out here now you see okay. this is the gogra river this is the chang chang changli something river i pata nahi yaar koi river hai this is chang chang ah, that's the one ah, sorry sab mere liye ye i'm very um, politically incorrect these ways sorry ah. now the red line is where the lac runs okay uh, if you can zoom in ah, bas stop okay the red line is where the lac runs you can see there is a river coming from the north that joins this river here now this is what is called an adp area of differing perception the red line is where india says the lac runs the yellow line is where the chinese say the lac runs out here okay and what they had done by the 8th of may you see that little purple dot that i have marked yes they had Come up and started building a camp out there, and they were actually building a camp camp out there, tents with corrugated iron roofs to prevent snow accumulation and things like that. They were actually building something out there. Ah, uh, now if you go to the next image, sir. Okay, this is the overall region. I'm showing you how the LAC runs. Here, stop. Huh. And that yellow line, they had come in there. now by the 23rd of may again same as on galwan what we saw was that the chinese had been evicted from a pakka they were built this wasn't even a kacha construction like in galwan they were building a pakka construction we had kicked them out of there and we had we have built up a massive base in that same area where i showed you the purple circle earlier it is a oh. massive base okay there are 500 troops out there and i'll tell you why building a massive base there is so important you look at the two pins to the north uh there is a towed artillery unit 11 kilometers from the indian base and an armored motor pool 12 kilometers from the indian base okay uh the indian base you can see i've marked to the south where gogra is marked indian point right uh south so there's three points out there south may indian point hai north of the lac there are those two points up north it is those things were massive there are about 20 uh, 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 light tanks and about 12 pieces of uh, heavy artillery out there uh, top or tank udhar hai aur agar aap right mein aayenge 15 kilometers from the indian base ye second pla armored unit hai isme mahatvapurna cheez kya hai jo aap dono hi dekh rahe hain the northern one which is its armored motor pool and towed artillery and the second pla armor unit can you see they are both stationed in valleys they can come very easily through the valley east to west to hit our camp in gogra down there and from the north to south also they are stationed at a valley they can just come in right so what our camp does uh, if you see the arrow pointing towards the yellow line if you just follow that yellow line down to the river out there that is where our base is that is the river coming in from china that is where or when well, the chinese side you may see that is where our base is now look 
how strategic the construction of that base is. Huge base, direct field of line of view to the northern armored motor pool and towed artillery, direct field of view to the PLA second armored unit on the right hand side of this map, on the east of this map. Okay. This has been constructed, this base was constructed in 14 days. 500 okay. people permanent base. We kicked them out without violence, mind you, and started constructing a base because all of this had been completed by the 23rd of May. Remember that. That is the most important thing out here. Okay. So Gogra May, far from what these people are saying that they came in and occupied our territory. Galvan May to aapne dekhi liya hai. They did not come in and occupy our territory. We kicked them out and then we went and though it was built on their side of the LAC. I'm sorry, I'm going to keep using Chinese territory. It is important to remember it is not Chinese territory. It is Indian territory under legal occupation by China. But we are talking about the LAC at the moment. Okay, so forgive when I say Chinese territory. It is not Chinese territory. Uh, slip of the tongue, hote rahega. I'm sorry, future maybe hoega. I can't uh, uh, control that. Sorry. So, idhar kya hua hai? Galvan mein to mainne aapko dikhaya tha ki kuch bhi nahi hua hai. Gogra mein ये लोग अपना एलएसी के अंदर आ रहे थे हमने परमानेंट बेस 14 दिन में परमानेंट बेस बना के वी हैव स्टॉप्ड देम फ्रॉम कमिंग इन एनी मोर दे वोंट इवन बी एबल टू सेंड पेट्रोल्स इन देयर एनी मोर ओके बिकॉज़ वी हैव बिल्ट इट ऑलमोस्ट एग्जैक्टली बैंग एट द एलएसी सो दे कैन नॉट कम इन नाउ देयर ओके सो गोगरा में भी कुछ नहीं हुआ है गलवान में भी कुछ नहीं हुआ है अभी ओके नाउ फाइंड नेक्स्ट फोटो प्लीज आई एम गोइंग सो Pangong so this is to show you the uh, uh, this is the cartographic definition now you'll find that a lot of the army people will tell you nahi nahi ye finger 2 nahi hai ye finger 8 nahi hai and things like that because they are going by their operational maps i am going to talk about fingers 1 to 8 from the cartographic perspective which is the standard accepted perspective because operational maps keep changing even with army folks there is a differing perception on what is where the red line is where the LAC runs. If you remember the very first, the declassified map uh, of the CIA uh, that had been uh, made in 1962. This was the line, the red line is exactly where the LAC they said had started running. The green line on the left, that is to say on the Indian side of the LAC, is finger two. This is where the Chinese used to patrol up to till 2014. Till October 2014, they used to patrol up to here. And that is where they claim up to. Okay. The orange line on the right hand side, that is to say on the Chinese side of the LAC, is finger eight. That is what we claim up to. But we patrol up to finger six, which is that uh, sort of gray area in the middle. Sir, so if you can just move the cursor in that gray area there, that predominantly gray area between uh, slightly to the right, slightly to the right, yes, slight yes, past yes, there, yes. stop. That is Sirijap. That is Sirijap. Okay. Now that is where the battle of Sirijap happened. Okay. And that is how far in. So you, you went because the initial map, the classified CIA map that I showed you was uh, 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 zoomed out quite a bit. You couldn't see the di uh, the distance. Here you can actually see the distance. If you can just keep moving the cursor around so people can pick it up with their eyes. Uh, if you can just keep rotating the cursor around there. Uh, yeah. So you can see from where the cursor is rotating all the way up to where I've dropped that pin on finger four. That is almost a five to six kilometer distance. Now, uh, they have built massive infrastructure okay massive massive infrastructure on their side uh, i am not going into what are all the fortifications and naval bases in fact where sir is moving around the cursor at sirijap you can see a tiny square on the right hand side of that an artificial square that is a massive chinese naval base that they've built they store their gunboats out there they have a radar out there which can scan the whole of the pangong lake uh, to see what boats are coming in, who is coming in, what is happening, and so on and so forth. So they, and they built that in 2006. So it has been there for that long. 
ये पता नहीं किस औकात से बोल रहे हैं कि वी कंट्रोल आफ्टर फिंगर फोर देर इज नॉट अगल इंडियन पीस ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर आफ्टर फिंगर फोर एंड फॉर वेरी गुड रीजन यू लुक एट द रेड लाइन द वे इट इज गोइंग इट फॉलोज अ माउंटेन रेंज इट इज द हाइस्ट पार्ट ऑफ दैट माउंटेन रेंज एंड इट गोज एंड हिट्स अप टू दी एल एस इन दी The, the knot in the mountains where you can see the snow upstairs, and on the right-hand side you can see a valley on the Chinese side running all the way up to there, which they control. They also have a road up there. So I don't know how these people are saying that they've come that we always control right up to six, because right up to six is where that Sirijab is, and that is where the Chinese naval base is. So there was no way we were controlling it. I mean, can you actually imagine the Chinese building in two thousand six a massive naval base with a radar? At least five to ten gunboats and amphibious landing ships out there on Indian territory or on Indian controlled territory. Patrols, like I said, are not controlled. Patrol, जब मेहमान जाके घर में आपको लड्डू खिलाने आते हैं, ठीक है? Patrol तब controlled बनता है जब कोई पता नहीं कौन गुंडा है, फूलन देवी आके आपके मुंह में पहले घी शक्कर डालेंगी, फिर बंदूक मारेंगी और बोलेंगी, मेरे नाम ज़्यादा इधर साइन कर, तेरा घर अब मेरा है. इंक्लूडिंग गूगल मैप्सोर्स गूगल मैप्स इज नो स्टैंडर्ड दो सीरी जाप इज शोन एट फिंगर एट एंड बियॉन्ड इफ यू सीन बिकॉज वी सीन नंबर ऑफ मैप्स कमिंग थ्रू It's good you raised this point. यही मैं आपसे बोल रहा था कि I am going by the cartographic definition. Finger eight इसमें जो है, ये जहाँ वो orange line right side पे जा रहा है, ठीक है? ये cartographic definition है. जो ये लोग बोल रहे हैं, सिरिचाप finger eight पे है, ये actually cartographically speaking ये finger six है. आप समझ रहे हैं? ये लोग lab relabel कर रहे हैं based on their operational maps. सिरिजाप्रेशन is cartographically speaking it is finger 6 when he was goc north according to his operational maps that might be his definition of finger 8 in which case he has already ceded all the territory right up to the orange thing to the chinese so it is in modi who has ceded that territory it is general panag who has ceded that territory all the way up to finger 8 because finger 8 is where i marked the orange line okay, okay. siri jab oh. is finger As per cartographic mapping convention, ठीक है और ये नॉट से शुरू होता है अगर आप गिनेंगे दिस इज वेयर फिंगर सिक्स इज कार्टोग्राफिक स्पीकिंग मैपिंग कन्वेंशन इंटरनेशनल मैपिंग कन्वेंशन के तहत फिंगर सिक्स सीरीज आप पे है जनरल पनाग के तहत ये जो ग्रे एरिया है इसका इसके ऊपर जो माउंटेन है ये फिंगर एट है ये फिंगर एट नहीं है ये ऑपरेशनल मैप्स में आर्मी मैप्स में शायद फिंगर एट है पर कार्टोग्राफिकली और इंडिया का क्लेम जो है वो फिंगर एट जो है वो ये ऑरेंज लाइन पे है ठीक है ना तो ये याद रख लीजिए नाउ इफ यू कैन गो टू द लास्ट फोटो दिस इज फिंगर फोर ओके नाउ यू कैन सी व्हाट हैपन यूर इन फिंगर फोर इफ यू एक्चुअली जूब इन ऑन द राइट बॉटम ऑफ द इमेज वे दैट टेक्स्ट इज इन व्हाइट right bottom not there not that one right bottom this is the license from 2020 can you see the imagery date on the right bottom it says imagery date 95 2004 right you can take the cursor yes. there yeah imagery yes. date yes. on the right hand side in bottom you can see this 95 2004 right ye 2004 mein liya gaya image hai theek hai if you can zoom out now Okay, now I want you to see what has happened in two thousand and four. This is how finger four was divided. Left me, you can see a very sharp mountain ridge. Okay, right. there is no beach on the 
that is the indian side there is no beach out there the water there is very deep it goes immediately 10 meters down okay right. whereas on the chinese side which is the right hand side the eastern side of your map you can see the mountain has a very gentle gradient coming down and there is a massive beach on the right there is even a sand bank on the right it's actually a beautiful area where you can it's it's like an italian summer beach ki tarah hai but what is the important thing you see is the road that they have constructed this was a track kacha road tha 1999 mein banaya gaya tha chiniyon ne 2004 mein jab ye image liya gaya hai aapko saaf saaf dikhai de raha hai ye kacha road nahi hai इस पे तार लगाया गया है कोल्ड तार लगाया गया है ये एसबेस्ट सॉरी एसफॉल्ट लगाया गया है ये दो लेन हाईवे है दिस इज अ टू लेन हाईवे बाय 2004। किस औकात से बोल रहे हैं वी कंट्रोल्ड पास्ट फिंगर फोर दे बिल्ट अ टू लेन हाईवे पेट्रोल आर नॉट कंट्रोल any time they wanted they could have brought tanks artillery inf uh, infantry combat vehicles whatever they wanted out here and machine gun you down you wouldn't have been able to do a damn thing kis mu se keh rahe ho you controlled past finger four we used to send patrols in here which has stopped now because they've constructed a big this thing my question is jab 1999 mein ye bana tha track aapne usko rokne ki koshish ki aapne usko demolition karne ki koshish ki nahi जब 2004 में ये कच्चा रास्ता पक्का रास्ता बनाया गया था दिस रफ रोड वाज टर्न्ड इनटू अ फुल ऑन प्रॉपर पक्का रोड डिड यू ट्राई टू स्टॉप कंस्ट्रक्शन डिड यू ट्राई टू डिस्ट्रॉय इट डिड यू ट्राई टू हैव इट डिसमेंटल द वे मोदी हैज फोर्स देम टू डिसमेंटल द डैम यू डिड नॉट हाउ द हेल आर यू सेइंग टुडे दैट यू कंट्रोल्ड दिस डैम एरिया उसने आके घर बना दिया है उधर और आप बोल रहे हो ये नहीं नहीं ये प्लॉट ऑफ लैंड मेरा है कहां से भाई यार दिमाग तो लगाओ ना दिमाग भी नहीं है क्या दिस इज जस्ट कंप्लीटन कॉमन सेंस इज वेरी अनकॉमन अनफॉर्चुनेटली अनफॉर्चुनेटली सो नाउ आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू शो यू द इंडियन बेस बिकॉज एज अ रूल आई विल नॉट शो इंडियन बेसिस Uh, uh there are troops if the chinese can find them congratulations to you i'm not going to make life easier but about 300 meters to the east of this on the indian side where this ridge is no longer precarious was the indian base that i spoke about till 2014 imagine up to 10 years after the point when this when the chinese built this road this pakka road pakka asphalted double lane highway we had just two huts do jhuki jhopdi on our side 300 meters away between may 2014 and october 2014 that is to say 6 years back under modi one within his first 6 months of government he converted that to a full edged base is a very powerful base where you can store a lot of things he packed all that well as putting out on google map now you go pangong so you check out this finger four and then you go there you will find some older imagery of it but it will be post 2014 so you can actually see what a good uh, uh, base it is uh, with how good a road that leads up to it never forget that okay so this whole nonsense now here's the thing it, did we lose it in 2014 as well if modi built a base up to there why couldn't he build a bridge across this mountain ridge and then build a base uh, uh, here as well why couldn't the congress do it in those 10 years from 2004 to 2014 when they were in government kyon nahi kiya bhai and you didn't even have the guts to build a base out there you had two huts out there you didn't have the guts to send in your bulldozers and dismantle this road if if india had any control to the east of finger 4 it was prior to 1999 okay after 1999 the uh, the power to control this area has strictly been with china if anybody tells you otherwise they're lying through their teeth and ask them patrols how do patrols equal uh, equal to control patrols mein aap bas bandook le ja sakte ho raste se to pa sakta hai 
टैंक आ सकता है बुलडोजर आ सकता है आप सोल्जर के पीठ पे तोप नहीं ले जा सकते हैं आप सोल्जर के पीठ पे टैंक नहीं ले जा सकते हैं टैंक का वजन पचास ले जा नहीं सकता यार माउंटेन के ऊपर बुलडोजर तो बात ही छोड़ दो and yet they would have you believe that they were taking bulldozers and what not on the other side a complete bloody nonsense okay so the reason i have shown you all of this without giving you the classified imagery is to make you understand that even without the classified imagery it is common sense for you to be able to figure out these things okay they go on saying sources 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 one classified image cost 50 dollars uh, they didn't even have the money to buy that sources 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 the moment you give them bala court mein bol rahe the bhai picture dikhao picture dikhao uh, agar tasveer nahi hai hum manenge nahi uh, source uh, ye nahi idhar bol rahe hain source 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 ye image sab ye amateur kaam hai sab ko chup ajay shukla style It's it's just one of those things. I'm just so furious with these people. I mean, you know, they lie in such a transparent way. I haven't showed you a single piece of classified imagery in this, and yet it was easy to figure things out. Okay, why couldn't they? There's a limit to agenda peddling, yar. Had to be. And every and now they're saying, "Ah, see, China is agreeing with you. Uh, Chinese government is agreeing with the prime minister's statement. He's being honest. He's he can't say it out loud. Ki ham China me guske tumko marne aaye the. We went into China and we decide to well shove a pineapple up where the sun don't shine. That's what he intended to say. He can't say it, of course." <laughs> that, as graphic as uh, you can be, Abhijit. I think that's one of your strengths. So that's a great explanation. I also asked about that uh, uh, that agenda peddling that's going around about the uh, Finger Four Ridge, and uh, it is being said that the Chinese have built fortifications uh, on the ridge. Uh, what's the truth about that? Yes, they have. They've not built fortifications on the ridge. It is those red uh, corrugated iron roof, uh, semi-durable tents that they have built. Uh, I suspect what is going to happen is that they are going to convert it to permanent structures sooner rather than later. There is nothing we can do to stop it because it is accepted that it is on the Chinese side of the LEC. Remember, yes, they have blocked off. Our ability to patrol up to Sirijap, which is finger six according to me cartographically, and it is finger eight according to Generals Panag and Co. Uh, operationally. But by October 2014, by building our base uh, west of finger four, where I showed you, we had stopped their ability to come up to finger two, where they used to be patrolling. Don't forget that. We have also forced them back from their claim line in Gogra. Don't forget that. in galwan we have stopped them from building a dam over a river illegally building a dam over a river don't forget that okay this is by no stretch of the imagination is this even a draw okay it is a very very significant victory you have changed the status quo on how india uh, china relations have been perceived now notice what the chinese reaction is they are desperate for de escalation they don't even want to tell their people how many died except global times said it is less than 20 we can finally reveal after a week it was less than 20 we didn't want to say how many because uh, you know hindustan ko bura lag jayega ki hamare kam log mare the ya kitne logo ko goodwill they said that they used the, that who she jin used the word goodwill ah goodwill so i don't take these uh, clowns seriously when china china is like a classroom bully agar aap unke nose pe mukka marenge na to wo khud apne aap hosh mein aa jayenge they will take revenge on you later when they are stronger they will take revenge on you never forget that we are in a very dangerous situation right now when they will take revenge a few weeks maybe months or years down the line 
so we need to this is the moment of greatest danger where we need to be extremely focused but what has happened on the 15th of june was by no means a defeat okay we changed the way china uh perceived this whole thing they thought of us as walkovers because as you know during the upa thing they used to keep coming in keep coming in keep coming in and we would let them keep coming in the nsab produced a report saying that they had occupied about 600 square kilometers of territory they forced the nsab to withdraw the report and deny it okay they did allow that, the that, that's what they did they in in demchok uh, they have come in they uh, across that uh, uh, nala oh, no, 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 they have not. The Hindu ran this report that uh, ter uh, terror sympathizing creep Pizza the Ashik ran that report. I immediately called up the local councillor there. The councillor he quoted without actually, he never said it was a Congress councillor. Okay, yeah. so you go to this, uh, uh, his name is Sinzok. I follow him on Twitter. If you go, he's one of the latest followers I have on Twitter. He's the local councillor there in Demchok. He told me, look, we have not, they have not come occupied the territory. You please go to his timeline. I follow him on Twitter. He's the, he would be the last 10 or 15 people that I've followed latest. He has taken a picture on the 19th of May, two days after this report came out in the Hindu, going right up to the international border and clicking a picture out there, showing that there is nothing on the plains out there. They have not come in on Denchok. It was one more lie that got floated and shot down immediately, but the Hindu never published a retraction. That fellow is notorious for publishing all kinds of rubbish reports. He lies through his teeth. He keeps lying. He's a jihadi sympathizer. Remember, all the op uh, reporters operating out of Kashmir. Okay, all the reporters were kicked out in 1990. Uh, uh, sorry, 1989. When did it start off? 87, 88, 89. Now. They were all kicked out. If you operate out of Kashmir, you have to have the jihadi stamp of approval. Otherwise, they will kill you. Okay, it is like a dhanda out there. Do not believe that man. Okay. You go to the I, 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 uh, I uh, hang on. Let me just quickly check. Uh, ta -ta -ta, if it won't take too long. Uh, In the meanwhile, I may remind all our viewers who are still uh, there. Oh. This that uh, is we are going to take questions after this and uh, you yes. may ask questions uh, preferably on the super chat because uh, otherwise it will be able to be very difficult to distinguish you from the others yes Abhijit. Uh, his name is konchok stanzin konchok stanzin i want you to go to his timeline i'm going to show you can you see that konchok stanzin yes 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 i'll follow him today <laughs> okay Executive Officer LA Okay, mm -hmm. you need to go to the timeline and check out on the 19th of. Uh, um, I, I, I just go through his timeline. He's taken a picture in Demchok just two days after this nonsense uh, report came out in the Hindu. Okay, so uh, uh, don't believe that rubbish. Okay, so now should we do uh, QA? Yeah, just, right uh, just, just one little question before the q a what are the uh, tactical moves that you expect immediate in the immediate aftermath of this one what are the in indian areas of advantage and where can chinese try and uh, push you back so little tactical no, not just strategic we have already seen in fact we can, can conclude uh, that uh, this uh, Galwan incident was actually a great strategic shift having global implications, not just uh, implications for India, but having global implications. It's a very, very significant event. And uh, I don't think it will be an, uh, an exaggeration to actually call it another surgical strike. So the, it, uh, it I just was. But uh, look, they can come in anywhere across the border because for the time being, their uh, infrastructure on their side of the border is much better. Ours is improving very, very rapidly, which is what they try to stop. Now, the one thing stopping them from doing anything to you is the fact that they want to keep taking territory, but they don't want this to turn out the way the 15th of June turned out. The moment it gets into a shooting war or into a shooting fight, 
they get very very uh, on edge okay so that is the pressure uh, and this is why you it is high time you started breaking non alignment this non alignment really needs to end it is it is way past its use by date it is like ek machhi jo 1962 mein mara tha wo sad ke itna sadiyal ho gaya hai ki us pe gidh bhi usko khana nahi chahte usme se itni badbu nikal rahi hai wo hai non alignment और उसका आप व्यंजन बना के अपने मेहमान को देना चाहते हैं ये देखिए कितना मैंने आपके लिए अतिथि देवो भवा जैसे डिश बनाया है आपके लिए कि इतना सड़ा हुआ एक मच्छी है नॉन अलाइनमेंट ये बकवास अब बंद करो ठीक है ना यू नीड टू साइन सम काइंड ऑफ ट्रीटी अलायंस विद विद अमेरिका नाउ नॉट येस्टरडे नॉट टूडे नॉट टूमोरो Uh, now let's deal with the questions i'm going to go through yes, one sir. by one uh, there's this gentleman sam is asking is our strategy uh, to rely I, I, on russia any good ha uh, let me start off right from the beginning because there were so many questions right in the beginning one by one we'll go through them we are dealing with a resentful deceitful and arrogant enemy what's the best strategy do we have expertise to bring their ports down like israel no we do not our cyber yes, warfare is uh, a obviously obviously uh, let ha uh, uh, yeah okay uh, okay i'm asking all this area Yeah. Uh, 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 bring their ports down like Israel. Uh, no, we do not. Our cyber security is a joke. Uh, you know, we got our uh, all our ME com uh, computers got compromised once in 2011. The Chinese could turn on the cameras and microphones of any ME computer anywhere in the world on any Indian embassy, uh, and then it happened again in 2014-15. So in those three years, we did nothing to fix it. Okay, and then what happens is. you then start giving huawei and co 5g contracts in india so this thing now needs to stop we need to start taking security a lot more seriously uh, unfortunately you know if modi continues to micromanage he will do right responses like this but the overall response will be wrong uh, these chinese troops uh, were new in the area that beautiful night especially i don't know what special guerrilla units yeah uh, they don't sorry uh, is our strategy to rely on russia any good is there any truth to the allegation that s400 uses compromised chinese electronics the chi the russians will not touch chinese electronics on any one of their platforms unlike us they they take operational security very very well okay they will not even dream of putting anything chinese into anything that they have the s400 the problem it poses is it's 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 good in a sense because what you use the s400 for is remember the china also has the s400 so you can use it to simulate how the chinese will try to shoot down your rafals uh, so you get great deal of operational knowledge from it okay so in that aspect it is good but it does prevent us purchasing advanced other advanced western uh, equipment because you remember turkey got kicked out of the f35 program by america just for buying the same s400 missile system okay so it comes with benefits and it comes with negatives remember though russia is not the country the ussr used to be it has now become a saudi arabia like country it's a gora saudi arabia log gore hain par jaise saudi log tel pe jeete hain ye log bas minerals pe jeete hain theek hai na the uh, value added the innovation in that society is completely dead at the moment their weapons are obsolete you can no longer keep buying russian weapons anymore they are overpriced for what they are it is like in this day and age if a mercedes benz c class costs you about 40 lakhs it is like paying 40 lakhs for an ambassador okay you can't spend 40 lakhs on an ambassador that is unfortunately the problem please comment on karakoram highway in india's options of blocking it Uh, we know options of blocking it. You know, they they think called nuclear weapons. We can't go around uh, doing uh, stuff like that out there. I don't know if this is going to change the equation there, but not really. Uh, is China doing magic? Yeah, come along seriously. China doing magic. Uh, just because water experts can't figure it out doesn't mean they're doing magic. Um, Okay, that's the Neeraj Kulkarni asking: Are we heading to local war? We, you know, we it. See, the problem is the Chinese are so unpredictable. Right now, everything that we're seeing, they're willing, their refusal to talk about the numbers killed, trying to take a de-escalatory stand in the Chinese language press. 
you know, there's a furious war going on in Weibo at the moment. Half of Weibo's users, it's just mirroring the Indian debate. Half of Weibo users are saying uh, that uh, the Indians thrashed the living daylights out of us. The other half are saying, no, we thrashed the Indians out there. I don't know. Like I said, it is a very, very dangerous situation at the moment. We don't know what the Chinese are going to do. Right now, they are on the back foot. But remember what happened at Doklam. We had them on the back foot. Then a few months later, when Wuhan happened, what they lost tactically, they gained at the negotiating table. I don't know how this is going to play out. Okay. Uh, sadly, I don't have much faith in our diplomat. What could have been, what has been achieved through military action could be lost through diplomatic incompetence uh, later oh, on. That's like been it was at, uh, it's at, happened uh, not just in Wuhan, it happened in the Shimla agreement in 1971 also. Yeah, yeah. There's Abhishek Kumar asking, sir, what is the real motive of Chinese? Yeah, real motive has always been the same throughout. They're a mercantilist state. They want to exploit resources. They're all about territory, territory, territory. Uh, there is no other motive. It is a nakedly aggressive imperialist state. Uh, they don't do cost benefit analysis. It's all about pride and all of that. So, you know, that's that. What can we expect from the defense minister's visit to Russia? I think it's an ill-advised visit. Uh, given that uh, Russia was much more circumspect than uh, China was, he's going to go give some uh, contracts to the Russians, but these are old contracts. Remember that. Uh, unfortunately for me, it indicates that we're still not willing to give up our non-alignment bullshit. Let's be clear about it. Every time you say non-alignment, please add bullshit to it. Those two words are inseparable. Where every time you say non-alignment, please say non-alignment bullshit. Okay. Inseparable. Those two concepts are inseparable. Uh, except one is more. Non-alignment produces enough the amount of uh, hot air that these non-alignment advocates uh, talk about. It's enough to run a Gober biogas plant. So it's almost a similar same quantity as bullshit as well. Uh, uh, what? Uh -huh. So uh, let me just go through some other questions out here. Yeah, the Defense um, Minister Russia question is over. The next question we'll take. What is the next question? What please? is, uh, what yeah, is the fact flash it here. Yeah, here is. Indian education system to bring strategic thinking, culture, and national security perspective, future generations. That's a more a philosophical question. Uh, what's your take? Uh, look, the Indian education system hasn't improved at all. It's one of the great failures of the Modi government. Uh, there's no improvement, zero improvement. The left, still, left mafia still controls it. All your bureaucrats and co are completely uh, indoctrinated by that left philosophy, which is why even today, you know, after on, on, on the 15th of June night, this happened on the 17th of June, the Hindu ran a tone deaf editorial saying non-alignment is still a very good policy written by who? <laughs> National Security Advisor, MK um, This kind of control. How do you expect? So your Indian education system is already broken. Okay, there is no way of uh, fixing it uh, that I can see. But in this case, the humanities education is much more broken. In addition to the fact that a lot of your people in government are compromised by the Chinese. Okay, so that's that's yes, important. exactly. So that, that is how the next question is actually leading into this one. Next question leading into this one, and says, what do you do about the Chinese fan base on our side? Uh, Chinese uh, fan base. Chinese fan base. The Chinese fans. On our what side? to do about the? Yeah, yeah. I can give you a lot of options. Okay, the first thing you do is you uh, anybody who has recommended going easy on China in internal bureaucratic IAS uh, 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 or defense memos. You place them under immediate suspension and order counterintelligence uh, audits on them. You find out who their teachers in humanities were and you do counterintelligence audits on them. You find who are all these think tankers and who have gone to China and what they've been writing, uh, all of that. I know two, three professors in JNU who get annual business class tickets. I know this because I booked one of those tickets funded for them when I was working as a lowly researcher, funded for them entirely by the Chinese government. Oh, wonderful. So, so, so. 
<laughs> you are on to the intelligence part of it unfortunately modi's great love of the bureaucracy he thinks nothing worthwhile uh, exists outside agar uh, you know there's this saying about the gita that you know jo aapko is kitab mein milega wo shayad iske bahar bhi milega jo but but jo aapko is kitab mein nahi milega wo bahar aapko kahi bhi nahi milega modi ka hai, ye attitude hai is babu logo se jo uh, jo is babu mein milta hai wo is ke bahar bhi mil sakta hai par jo gyan aapko is babu de sakte hain uske bahar aapko koi bhi nahi de sakta ye unka wo shraddha hai unke is babu ki aur wo gita se bhi badhkar hai theek hai na to ye uh, aap will, please what i will do is that i will schedule a discussion on bureaucracy on the 1st of august after i have left ah, bureaucracy उटलवान <laughs> Two arms of a pincer, and there's one more question in response to incremental land grabbing. Can China take tangible, aggressive steps here under Andaman to pressurize China? Okay, uh, uh, so uh, pressurize China in the Andamans? No, but look, the the way you pressurize them is to start exercising much more and encouraging South Asian state, uh, Southeast Asian states to get more belligerent with China. Stip- Sorry, stiffen their spine in that sense. Depsang and Galwan to arm of a pincer. Like I said, I don't know. The Chinese are so 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 unpredictable. Our knowledge of the Chinese system, unfortunately, is all second-hand knowledge. We read what the Americans write, we then translate it to Hindi or pick up facts from them, and that is what becomes an official document to the government of India. Okay, it is impossible. There is no primary source analysis because our students don't go live there. Unlike French students and German students who go live there as students on cultural exchange programs and things like that, I have noticed Indian students who go there just go to the library. They have huge kinds of. You know, I had a friend who lived there for two years. She didn't know anything beyond her university. I knew more about Beijing than she did because she just used to go to her shakahari restaurant. They call Amitabh. Amitabh. It's Amitabha restaurant out there, which indicates pure vegetarian, as in no meat, no fish sauce, and things like that. That is all she knew out there. Okay, so they, we have the as as the students who are there, our they to feel completely bigyaat. Anything you say, but see that is not the Chinese way. They, they get completely sold out. They get domesticated, and uh, uh, there's that joke in Yes Prime Minister, na? How long does it take the bureaucracy to domesticate? Them? the prime minister to house train the prime minister jaise kutte jab palte hai na unko palne ke samay sikhana padta hai ki bachche susu bahar karo ghar mein nahi karna hai waise hi jab hindustani students udhar cheen mein jaate hain unko sikhaya jata hai beta hindustan pe peshab karo china pe kabhi peshab mat karo theek hai ghar pe koi peshab nahi karta hai aur wo wapas aake hindustan mein wapas aake apne hi desh pe peshab karna shuru kar dete hain to ye hai so now i go to the second last note second last question is it time to finally launch dharm yuddh ya yeah, dharm yuddh karne ki hamari aukat nahi hai understand this is like the uh, okay there's one more question that's come up but let me answer the dharm yuddh question first uh, there is no uh, chinese industrial might is so far ahead of you this is going to be like the northern states versus the southern states in the american civil war the south will be able to score some spectacular victories it will have greater morale greater elan uh, greater generalship but ultimately the north was always going to win because it had such disproportionate industrial muscle okay china all it has to do is wait us out we can prolong the lo- war for about one month two months and then you know what happened in the 65 war pakistan stocks ran out so intelligence failed to predict it our stocks will run out and then they will crash you. and they don't care how many people they lose remember in in the uh, great famines and things like that man made famines in china and overall even without the famines the chinese communist party has killed 7 to 10 times the number of chinese people that the japanese imperial army did in its war crimes 
human life is kind of out there. China. Seventy million people they killed in the two two more, revolutions. More, 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 more than seventy million people they killed. So uh, uh, that's that. Okay. Uh, next question on Google Earth. This is the last question. question. This is the absolutely the last question. Uh, just two Google more questions. Earth. Well, these eight minutes. Eight minutes. On Google Earth, why Chinese side structures are not very visible? On India side, everything is visible. You can see ITBT written on rocks. That is because the Chinese side isn't updated. And yes, Google tries to stay on the good side of the Chinese. That is because India refuses to ever take action against any of these people. Twitter, Facebook, all these guys, they keep thumbing a nose. They even refuse to come for a parliamentary hearing and say, screw you to our parliament. So this is yoga, na? You don't use any of the coercive measures against them because you're too uh, beholden to them. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, look, Google Maps is always about a year, two, three years old. Uh, you have to invest if you want to do uh, imagery, then invest in proper commercial imagery. Final question. Uh, do you think Modi can recover the 600 square kilometers of our area? Can Sanjay and you talk to the NDU and PM and open their eyes if I went in? How? Blah, blah, blah. No, he cannot because they have built infrastructure in that territory. And like we discussed, possession is nine tenths of the law. Okay. Unhone infrastructure put down, apna ghar bana diya hai. Ab aap unko udhar se nikal nahi sakte. Say, can Sanjay and you talk to the NDU and the PM? I am persona non grata in the PMO. They hate me because I keep abusing the PM left, right, and center. So, mera to, mere ko to goli mar ke bhaga denge bahar se. So, if you try to be my guest, I suspect you also won't get an appointment, but best of luck, try. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Abhijit. It's been a very enlightening talk, and you have actually removed of all which has been around. And, um, well, we've been having so many people who have been flaunting their expertise. That's, uh, but, as I said earlier, also in an article that I wrote, that uh, the real thing is somewhere else. And that the real thing, uh, you have brought out uh, the, the best manner possible. So thank you very much once again. And uh, while this um, goes on, that uh, once it is updated a little bit more, and people finally start accepting your version, I, I don't think it is yet fully accepted. There will be a lot of doubting Thomases. And there will be a lot of carping and uh, caviling people here and there. So once it is done, then maybe a week or two down the line, we meet again. Till then, good night and thank you very much. Namaste.